Welcome to Forging a Life Beyond the Curve, calling in your unique destiny with Coach Christine Clark. Imagine you are a ball of steel, smooth, small, and cool to the touch. Your very being is softened by fire as you take hits that shape you. Christine is a transformational life coach dedicated to empowering entrepreneurs to create a whole life success on their terms. On this show, you will be forged into a magnificent, powerful, highly functional work of art that is your significant life. Now, here's your host, Christine Clark. Join me, Coach Christine Clark, as we forge our lives. We are going to go beyond the curve and call in your unique destiny. Who will you be when you believe you have what it takes? Hello, hello. I am Coach Christine Clark, and this is Forging a Life Beyond the Curve, calling in your unique destiny. I'm here every fourth Tuesday of the month at 11 a.m. Pacific and 2 p.m. Eastern. That's U.S. time. Hello to everybody listening on the radio waves, those of you who are listening on internet, watching us on YouTube and Facebook. Hello, hello. You know, um, as always, one of you absolutely beautiful souls will receive a free coaching program. You know, build your bonfire, blaze into your destiny with laser coaching. This is uh, given away one program free with each month. Just send me an email to Christine at Sunglow Transformation with your name, your phone number, and your email address, subject line, free laser coaching grab that opportunity to move yourself forward. I love working with people and moving them into their future. And this is an opportunity for you to be able to do that um, free with me. And I just love all the wonderful people that I get to meet and work with through this offer. It's been exciting. Uh, You guys are the best, absolutely the best. Today, we're talking about the subconscious, you know, to manifest abundance and achieve success. You know, we simply have to tap into the subconscious, right? And what I call your inner three-year-old or your hooligan, you know, our subconscious takes up 83 to 95% of the power of the brain and its capacity is virtually unlimited. And so why are we not excelling, you know, at life in all different ways? What's, What's going on? And it's the tapping into the subconscious that's the difficult part. Your inner three-year-old is wily. You know, she's a hooligan and she plays by her own rules. You know, accessing the subconscious requires us to understand that crazy inner child. So if you're ready to claim the power within, join me here and we're going to talk about that uh, as we go forward today. You know, you've got to meet this hooligan. And I want to introduce her to you. She is knowledgeable and she has the power of the subconscious, which is basically 9%, 90% of the brain. If you think of the giant iceberg, you know, you got the 10% on top above the surface, and then you got the 90% underneath. That's our intellect on top and the subconscious is all that power, all that underneath the uh, surface of the water. And one of Maxwell, Maxwell Malt, he was one of the authors that I cut my teeth on learning about self-development in the world. Um, back in hmm, the 30s or 40s when he wrote his book, he talked about it as your creative success mechanism. That piece of you that can bring to fruition, that has the power. And I want to introduce you to that three-year-old. Now, first of all, this child she knows way too much. Um, She has been recording everything since the day you were born that has ever happened to you. She knows everything. She knows when uh, you fell down and skinned your knee. She knows when you spilled the milk in grade school. And she knew when you had that crush and that really good looking kid and when you were in second grade, but she has all of it put down and it's stored permanently on the hard drive in her absolutely totally unlimited data bank. And she just isn't recording everything that has happened with us. She records how it felt, you know, what made you happy? What made you joyful? What made you sad? What made you frightened? 
and she details all of this and then categorizes it, you know, into positive and negative and sorts it out and kind of maintains it. But it's a huge thing that she has everything that has happened to you since first. I'm going to do a little screen share and we're going to just show you a quick picture of your inner hooligans. These are your these are your subconscious. This is your little hooligan boy and your little hooligan girl uh, that is inside of you that have been doing recording ever since you began um, your journey. And she is the absolute queen of all she surveys. And that's the thing about the subconscious. The subconscious, your child is the center of the universe. And just like a three-year-old, have you ever seen a three-year-old operate? Like they are in the center and everything else is around them, is for them, meant for them. You see a little kid and he sees a bright red ball at the end of the long aisle and he's going to, he's going after it because he sees it and he knows that's there specifically for him. And as the center of the total universe, everything revolves around them. And that's one of the really cool, powerful parts of your subconscious. The other piece of that, when everything revolves right around you as a child, then everything that happens is your doing. So when you're the queen of all you survey, when everything is your world, the cause and effect is limited to your self-perception. So the little three-year-old hooligan child inside, when something is wonderful happening, when you're getting hugs, when your needs are being met, when there's harmony and good things are happening, it's like, oh, I did that. I own that. See, all this wonderfulness, that's me. Same thing when there is anger, when there is raised voices, when there is discipline, when the milk gets spilled and there's repercussions, the limiting factor is that I did that too. That's my fault, all my fault. Everything that happens is my fault. And at some point, you know, we grow out of this. Maybe when we're 16, 17, I think of, of kids in families uh, where there's divorce and how often the children believe that it was their fault or they caused the parent, the mother or the father um, to leave or to not want to be together. And I think if you're late teens, you have enough comprehension of the world to figure out that that wasn't your fault, that it was between these two people. But as children, little children, we perceive it as us. It's, you know, whatever happened, it was because of us. And that's what your inner hooligan does. That's your child. She believes that everything that goes on is because of her. And that's how she recognizes the world. Now, she's got some priorities that are good to know. She wants to be right. It's her cataloging system. And so the big thing is I'm right. I am always right. I want to be right. And I have to be right. So when a belief gets formed, when an incident happens and there is um, recognition, it's like, okay, this is how the world works. This is how, you know, what I see, and this is what I believe. And as soon as that judgment is made, because it's important to understand and have these judgments so that we have a solid framework to work in. So we don't want things that are wishy-washy. So as soon as we figure this out, then to be right, all the information that comes in is going to get put into that folder. And if it doesn't fit in that folder, well, then we're going to just discount it. We're going to look for evidence and gather up evidence to support the idea, this value, this belief that we form wants to be right. Your child also wants to win. You know, she is a kid and having fun is so important and it's fun to win. It's fun to be right. And she just loves having fun and enjoying life. And that's the little kid in all of us. That's part of your subconscious to allow that inner child to be appreciated and to be able to enjoy life and have fun and giggle and play and laugh. This is paramount. 
And then there's the really big one, that big priority is to keep you safe. And your subconscious wants to keep you emotionally safe above all else. Yes, we know instinctively not, you know, we're afraid of heights and we're afraid of loud noises. Those are the like basic things that are ingrained in our body. And your subconscious wants to keep you emotionally safe in addition to that. And to succeed for your subconscious to really be feel like she's winning, like she's doing her job, is her goal is to keep you emotionally safe. So we're maximizing pleasure and we're minimizing pain. And so that's how the framework gets set up. And then she handles the information. Now we get the brain gets millions and millions of bits of information every second. The stimulus is overwhelming. First of all, we want to know why. The brain wants to know why. It's a meaning-making machine. And you think about the little kid, the two-year-old or the three-year-old that's always asking why. Why this? Why is that? Why, you know, why can't I have the Snickers bar before I eat my vegetables? Why do I have to eat my vegetables? Why? You know, and then why is, you know, why do we have to, you know, put on shoes? Why can't we just go barefoot? The why is the meaning making machine of the brain. And so they are always looking, you know, why, 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 and then answering the question. The subconscious then kind of looks for how to decide what's important and what's not. First of all, once you make a judgment, it's important to continue to gather up information that supports the judgment. So that's part of it. The other piece, one of the other pieces is authority. The importance of the source, where is the information coming from? And our first sources of authority are those people that raise us, our parents, our siblings, the immediate family, and then it spreads out so that our sources of authority are uh, our school teachers, the people in the community that we know. And those influence, when we hear information that come from those sources, we decide that that's important and we gather and hold on and pay attention to that stuff more than if it comes from a different source, a less um, authoritative source, somebody that as a child or you don't know. Now here's the interesting part. Your little inner hooligan pays attention to all those things. But as we grow and mature, the most authoritative voice is going to be our own. Your subconscious listens to you more than anybody else. Another way that the brain, the subconscious deals with information as it's coming in is deletion. You know, it judges what is significant and what is not. And then we look for the correlation. Does it align with our beliefs? Does it align with our values? Does it align with what we already know and believe? And if so, well, then let's let this piece in. But if it doesn't, then let's, let's leave it out. It's not that important. If you walk into a flower shop and all of you believe that, you, that roses are red, and violets are blue. And then you walk into the flower shop and you see yellow and orange and green roses, your brain might say, those aren't roses, roses are red. So those are must be some other flower. Violets are blue. So you see some other violets and it's like, ah, oh, that's, you know, that's not a violet, it must be some other plant. That's part of the deletion. And then we have distortion. We distort the facts, the information. We kind of slant it so that it fits with our pre-existing beliefs. It's just easier that way. It's the way our brain manages. One of the reasons why eyewitness testimony is not always exactly right because people are going to see what they're looking for, see what they believe, see what fits. And that way we can get rid of a lot of extra information because it's just too overwhelming to bring it all in. And then the last piece that your brain uses to figure things out is generalization. To attribute experience from one event to an entire category, which the experience was an example of. 
So that is really great for us to learn to kind of group things together so we don't have to relearn it every single time. And let's say you walk into a bakery and you've never been in a bakery before and you walk into the bakery and they say, well, what would you like to have? Well, I don't know. I'm going to look at this and look at this, look at this. And the person behind the counter starts getting kind of cranky and says, you know, would you make up your mind, figure it out? You know, it's just, you know, it's a pastry, pick one. You want a croissant, you want a donut, you want a filled Bismarck. It's like, you might think that all bakery owners are crabby. No, it's just that one, but it was your first experience. And so you might attribute that to something else. You might attribute that to all bakers. And the part of this that goes with the current conversation within our country is that we attribute experiences to different people. And we decide, well, you know, all those people drive like crazy. They're just crazy drivers. Or we say, well, these people, they're just, you know, they're never show up for work. And we are attributing an experience from one and then categorizing it as experience. This is an example of how all, and that gets in the way of us really being able to connect, being able to expand, to learn, to really grow and be the people that we want to be in a community that we want to be, because we'll generalize and we have to relearn those generalizations. One of the things that is really, really important to know is that all of this information that we're talking about is knowledge to understand their inner hooligan, how she operates, what's going on inside. And knowledge is then power, because if you understand it, you can change it, you can shift it. And that's what's important. So one of the biggest pieces that your inner hooligan has is that a story of the unknown is scary. And that wily inner child is hell bent to keep you confined to your current status quo. And that means that if you're not living your best life, you got to break out of that. But the subconscious thinks that what is unknown is more frightening, is more dangerous than what is known. And all of our dreams live outside that comfort zone, live outside that peace. And when we can speak with our subconscious in a way that it understands us, it allows us to break through that. The truth is that we do new things all the time. We do that we can go into a new situation and we learn, we go to school and we learn, we go to high school and we learn. We are always going into new situations, but when you get into a place where the new situation is us wanting to make a change in our life, us wanting to live into our destiny, live into the future, we have a calling, we have something in our heart that we're excited about, then we are stepping into that alone. We don't have the structure of going to a job and learning the ropes on the job. And that gives even a higher fear factor for your subconscious because there is no guidelines. And that's where that subconscious can really get in the way of us doing something we really want to do because it wants to keep us where we're at because what's known, it's understood. And that's way better than diving into unknown waters. We're going to take a little break here. And when we come back, your inner hooligan has its own communication structure. It understands how to communicate, but we have to communicate with it in its own way. It has its own dialect, its own way of being. So when we come back, it's like, how do I talk to my inner child? So it understands me, pays attention to me. That's what we're going to talk about when we come back from our break. I'm coach Christine Clark. You can find me at my website, Sun Glow Transformation. I am also on the web at Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, Sun Glow Transformation and also Coach Christine Clark. We're gonna break and then we will come right back.
Yes, I am Coach Christine Clark. This is Forging a Life Beyond the Curve, calling in your unique destiny. Um, I'm here every fourth Tuesday at 11 a.m. Pacific and 2 p.m. Eastern. You know, our inner hooligan has its own communication structure. And to communicate with your subconscious, you really have to kind of get to know it and then do work the way it it's works. Your inner hooligan, your child loves to serve and will dish up anything you really desire. It wants to please you. It wants to bring to you that which you want most. And the issue is that it really has a very simplified language. And she needs a very clear directions. And so often we are giving mixed signals. And I want to see, um, tell ourselves that we want to be the number one salesperson for the division uh, for the fourth quarter. And in order to do that, we're going to reach out, we're going to make 14 calls every single day to these people and really work work the numbers and work it. And so we are getting, dive in and we're making our phone calls and people aren't answering and they're not calling back. And then some people talk to you and say, oh, that'd be great, but let's talk about that next year. Let's revisit that next year. And a few people you talk to say, oh, you know, that's great, but I don't think that's really what we're looking for right now. And, okay, fine. And you start going, this is so hard. This is so difficult. It's like pulling teeth to be able to talk to people. All I need to do is be able to sit down with people. Nobody wants to sit down with me. And your hooligan is sitting there taking notes. Okay, this is hard. This is no fun. This is great. I'm not having fun. This is awful. We don't like it. It's like, okay, so we should not do this. And next thing you know, your subconscious is serving up procrastination. It's serving up perfectionism. It's serving up ways to avoid doing this because the information you're giving your subconscious is, I don't like doing this. It's like, well, then let's not do it because my first priority is let's have fun. So what happens is our subconscious is always on, always listening and always filling in and we'll do what we want if we can give it the right directions. The energy of the subconscious is so simple. It takes our instructions very literally. And she's tuned in the entire time. She's taken notes the entire time. And she wants to pay attention to the information that's important. There are pieces, parts of what's coming in that are gonna get, oh, spotlighted. First of all, we talked about the authority. First authority is originally those people that are surrounding you as a young child, it's those people that are in authority around you, your parents and so forth. As we get older, it becomes us. We become the authority. And so what we're saying out loud and what we're saying in our head carries the most weight. And then the next piece is the repetition. How often is something said? Growing up in my household, we had traditions around Christmas. And so in your household, if you have traditions around Christmas or Hanukkah or Kwanzaa, then those are things that we um, remember. It happens again and again. There's stories within the family that get told again and again. And that repetition means that these things are significant. These things are important. And we want to hold on to these and take it to heart. Your subconscious is the same way. Anything that gets repeated is like, oh, this is really important. So if you are waking up in the morning and saying, oh, I love my life. I have all the energy in the world. This is fantastic. Can't wait to get to work. Yay. Then it's like, that's great. But if you're waking up in the morning and saying, oh, if I could only sleep for 10 more minutes. I am so tired. I never seem to be able to get ahead. There is so much on my plate. It's just wearing me out. I just can't stand this anymore. I just, there's no time. There's no time to do the work. There's no time to make the phone calls. There's no time to spend with my kids. I am just out of time. And guess what? Your subconscious is going, oh, we're out of time. That's what you're going to get. You're going to get no time, no time, always no time. Because you're telling it repeatedly that that's what's important. And your subconscious doesn't have the intellectual under, understanding. It's like a small child. 
it is a three-year-old. And so whatever you say, it's expect, it takes it for verbatim. Absolutely. That's what you're talking about. So that's what is, and that's what you're going to get. The other piece that makes information important is the emotional energy. And here's the thing. I'm going to do another little quick screen share here. The emotional energy that you have, and you can be, oh, you did such a great job. It's wonderful. Yay. Good for you. You get accolades, you get your diploma, you get recognized for all the wonderful things you did. Everybody thought that the speech you did, that the paper you did, that those artists, you know, the painting you did were fantastic and you're getting your accolades, you're getting the excitement and it's all wonderful. And that emotional happy charge is woohoo, yay for me. Mom or dad come in and say, good job. We're so proud of you. Ah, oh, that's awesome. You know, and then there's the other side of it where, oh, God damn it. Why did you have to do that? Really? You are such a slob. You are, you always make mistakes. Can you ever get things right? Again, emotional energy, emotional charge. Now here's the thing that happens is that your subconscious does not recognize the difference between positive emotional energy and negative emotional energy. The emotional energy is equal. So it doesn't matter what's coming down the pike, but if it's charged, then you're subconscious going, oh, this is good stuff. Hang on to it, right? We want more of this because it thrives on emotion. What we want to be aware of is what are we giving it? What are we pushing into? That's what is in, so we can say, okay, when negative things happen, then we have to dissipate that energy. We have to manage it. When good things happen, take it on, hold it. But whatever gets the most energy Get your subconscious, your inner hooligan's attention, and that's what she's going to do. So those are the things that your subconscious pays attention to. Now, there's some mistakes that we make besides just the way we're communicating is a lot of times we want to lead with our intellect. We want to lead with our ego. We want to lead with that top 10% of the iceberg that's above the surface because it thinks it knows what's going on and what really is that the intellect makes bad choices as far as what to do or how to do it because the ego gets involved. It wants to look good. It wants to be able to get approval from others as the most important thing. It wants it to be bright and shiny and the steps forward to be easy and to look suave while we're sweating, right? When you allow your subconscious, your heart, your soul to decide what you want to carry forward, what you want to do, the intellect is a great tool to bring in to create the steps to get there, but it isn't a good leader. It's a great follower. So the first mistake is that we tend to lead with our head rather than with our heart. And if we can switch that around, we are plugging into the power of our subconscious so much easier. The other thing that we get caught up on is believing that there's a quick fix, that whatever it is um, we can have should happen faster. So many people I work with, I, you know, where are you at? Well, I'm not as far as long as I want to be. It's like, okay, yes, we understand this because we always wish that we were further along. We always wish it could have happened better. Now, transformation in and of itself can happen very rapidly. You can do a walkthrough, do an exercise, and you can shift. You can release some baggage, get a new story, and have a clear understanding of something that now is empowering, that used to be disempowering. That can happen. But just because you have that moment of clarity and brightness, you still have to do the work to maintain that, because we all have this entire life history of baggage and preconceived notions and ways we have operated that have to be re-massaged and reorganized. And the truth is that that old patterns are going to pop back up. 
So it always takes time. And one of the things we fall prey to is the idea that I should be able to have an epiphany and never ever have to go back to the pain that I experienced before, or I should be able to have be further along in my journey, have more than I have now, the process should be fast because we get told in media that there's overnight successes. What they don't tell us is that that person has been working on their project for 15 years. So the belief in the quick fix actually kind of breaks down and gets in the way of what the subconscious can bring to us. So what do you need to know to get where you wanna go? You know, your three-year-old doesn't care about tangible rewards. So that is when you talk about what you want, when you set your goals, of course, we can have goals that include what we want as far as finances, what we want as far as a home, area of the country we want to live in. Those are part of our visualization. And those are good to have. Those are the head part. The heart part speaks to the subconscious because your subconscious doesn't care about tangible rewards, but it does care about the intangible, the feeling of success, to be proud of yourself, to have fulfillment because of the work you do, to be excited working with others, helping other people achieve. There's that intrinsic feel good reward when you, someone else has success because of what you did. Those are the feelings that the subconscious will plug into. So when you not just visualize your goal, but you have to feel it. And that feeling is the thing that engages that inner hooligan child, wants her to step in so she can do the work and work alongside you because she's excited about the emotions. Um, your three-year-old doesn't understand future tense. You know, if I do now, you know, when I, then I, you know, when I um, sell, you know, have that first best-selling book, then I can have the Cadillac subconscious like eh, later I'm not even there because future does not resonate the subconscious only operates in the here and now and it's always taking information and bringing it to us but it doesn't operate in the future so you always have to talk to it as it is right here right now and so you speak affirmations not as if you're gonna get something, but as if it's already done. I am so happy and excited that I get to go speak to three groups this month. Yay, it's done, it's here, it's now. So when we come back from our break, you know, how do you speak to that inner three-year-old? We understand that it's got its own language, it's got its own way of categorizing things. So what does it take to really connect to that inner three-year-old so that you and she can work together to create the world that you want to create. And that's what we're going to talk about when we come back. I am coach Christine Clark. Uh, you can find me at my website, sunglowtransformation.com. Click on the link to get a free coaching session there. If you would like to uh, put your name in for the laser coaching program that's going to be given away this month. Do send your name, your email, and your phone number to me at christine at sunglowtransformation.com. Look me up on LinkedIn, Instagram, and Facebook at Sunglow Transformation and also at Coach Christine. And we will be right back after this break. Hello, this is Coach Christine Clark, and this is Forging a Life, Going Beyond the Curve, Calling in Your Unique Destiny. We're talking about our inner hooligan, our inner child, which is the subconscious, one of the most powerful forces on this world, and how do we access that power to bring to fruition everything that we want in our life. And you have to learn how to speak to that inner three-year-old. Understanding how the mind works and how the subconscious operates is so important uh, to be able to have that awareness. So when you're working with your hooligan, 
really this, it starts with awareness. Everything we've talked about this hour, when you understand the process of uh, sorting out the information and what the filters are to let it through, when you understand that once there's a value established that your subconscious will um, go find evidence and build that file folder for you. So with awareness, then you can change how you are interacting, what you're saying, both through your mouth and in your head, and also the emotions that you're attaching to it, the things that you are paying attention to, because that all filters and funnels into what your subconscious is picking up and then what it's deeming that you want based on the evidence. So it all starts with your own awareness and then being able to change up how you're handling things, how you are approaching life really. Uh, first of all, remember that you want to be able to speak repeatedly with authority and a positive inflection. Say those things that you desire every single day, build yourself up and you are the ultimate authority for your subconscious. As you hear things from other sources and expand your knowledge base and expand your understanding of the world, you are going to decide different people um, are worth paying attention to. And when you do it, then your subconscious automatically does that because it's your choice. So as the ultimate authority, what you say and how you speak to yourself is the big decision maker for whether or not you're going to get what you want, because it depends on the messages you're giving that internal piece of you. The positive inflection is huge. You want to be able to put a lot of happy, good juice on it, on everything that you do. And when things don't go right, breathe, let them go, recenter yourself. When you go down the rabbit hole of why, and this is awful, and I never your subconscious is paying attention to that. And that is where we can really sabotage ourselves. So understand that life is happens and it's up and down and what's present in the moment, you can always take a new step forward. And that's the big thing. What are you telling yourself and what is your subconscious taking notes on? You know, speak of your goals and your desires in first person as if it has already occurred. This is easy. This is and you'll create your affirmations, create your what you want. So you are saying, I am speaking to groups of 20 to 25 people three times every month. I am publishing my book. I feel so good and excited knowing that my book is out there and people are learning from it. This is fun. Anything you speak of as if it has already happened, your subconscious believes it's already happening because that's the way it perceives and will work to bring that to you. When you say, I have, I love going around and meeting with people. I love having coffees with so and finding out all these exciting, wonderful people. People love working with me. That says, this is what's happened. This is current. This is affirmed. And your subconscious will open it up and say, oh, this is what we want. It'll bring to you. And that's the, that's the magic magnetism that people talk about with the subconscious is when the idea is instilled, the subconscious will go to work for you. You're going to be walking in a store and then you're going to see somebody over there. And it's like, I don't know why I want to go talk to that person, but I want to go talk to the person. You go over and say, Hey person, I'm a person, I've got a book that I've just published and I don't know why I'm supposed to talk to you, but here's my card. And they go, Oh, Hey, we're, you know, we're a service that disseminates, you know, positive stuff and let's go have coffee. It happens. You get those intuitive hits that come from that subconscious having the radar open because you've told it what you're looking for by using current tense in your desires. So you listen to yourself, pay attention to the words that you're using and the voices that are speaking when you're talking, whether you're talking out loud or talking in your head. 
if you are berating yourself, telling yourself that no matter what you do, it never works out. No matter how hard you try, it isn't going to happen. I have no time. And I, I don't have any energy. I can't do everything I need to do. There's too much. Your subconscious is hearing all that and making sure that you don't have time, that you are tired, that it is too much. When you are angry because you have done due diligence and you have did step A, step B, step C, and you're not getting the results you want, and you say, well, this is just dumb. This is stupid. I hate having to call so many people. I hate having to constantly go out and do copies. Your subconscious is listening and saying, okay, well, let's not do that. Let's procrastinate. Let's sabotage this. And the worst part is that inner critic. When the inner critic starts beating the crap out of you, that's your own voice selling yourself that you are not up to the task, that you are not worthy, that you are not, that you're not, period. And your subconscious is hearing that. And what I question you want to ask is, would you say that to a three-year-old? If your inner self was sitting there in front of you, would you be saying these things to that child? Would you tell that three-year-old that because they fell off the teeter-totter and chipped their tooth that they're no longer ever going to be photogenic? No, we wouldn't do that. Would you say those things to a friend? No, you wouldn't say those things to the friend. So don't say it to yourself because your subconscious is listening and it's taking it all in. And you have the power to change it up by what you're telling that child, that inner child. One of the things that you can do is what I call mirror exercise and just take a moment each night and look at yourself in the mirror and say in first person, Christine, Benny, Jacob, whoever I am, looking into the mirror and saying, you know, I am so proud of you. I am, you did great things today. You got out of bed, you went to work, you showed up well, I think it's wonderful. And then the last thing you say is, I love you. And when you say that to yourself in the mirror, you're speaking to that inner child, that subconscious that is getting its strokes, that is getting to be appreciated. It gets to win. And then it can bring empowerment to you. And the worse that little exercise feels, the way more we need it. So to get outside your comfort zone, we always are stepping into new things, but when we go for something that we're really called to do, quite often there's not a lot of structure in it because we're not doing it as part of our schooling. We're not doing it as part of a job. We're doing it as something that we personally are invested in. And if it's heartfelt and if there's a lot of passion and we're stepping into it, that is really scary for your subconscious because you're stepping outside the comfort zone and you are just, you're going into the unknown, which is part of it. The subconscious loves to stay in what's known, loves to keep us because even if it's not fun, it's not happy, even if our circumstances and the best circumstance in the world, it's what we know. And that's why we hang on to it. That's why it's very difficult to overcome bad habits because we're used to them. When you're stepping out to really go for something, especially if you're really in, passionate about it, if it's your heart is in it, that's a lot of risk. You're risking so much emotion because you've elevated the stakes because you really, really, really feel strongly about this. And that subconscious, that inner child's going, oh my goodness, we go, oh, this is scary. And so the fear you feel and the sabotage that shows up is just your subconscious wanting to keep you comfortable because that unknown step is A, 
we have no idea what's going to happen and B, you're really passionate about it and that's really risky. And so what we want to be able to do is acknowledge that, okay, I understand you're trying to keep me safe. I appreciate you for what you have done for me in the past. And it's okay, I've got this. To be able to acknowledge your inner hooligan that he and she has done their due diligence. I appreciate you. You have guided me this far. And I want you to know that we're gonna be okay. Talk to that child. Let them know that this fear does not necessarily have to be and that it's going to be all right. And release, release the child. I no longer need your protection in this. You have done good. You've done a good job. Thank you for your care. I've got this. And that's the really important part that we want to be able to have. So you learn to speak to that inner child in ways that it understands. Let it have fun. Appreciate every single thing that you do. Because when we are in disappreciation, when we're in, no matter what we do isn't enough, and we keep telling ourselves that, pretty soon that little inner child, that subconscious says, okay, I'm, I'm taking my ball and I'm going home because I am. this isn't fun anymore. So we don't want to do that. So you want to be able to appreciate. You want to be able to recognize and what it's done for you and say, yeah, let's, let's work together and move forward so we can achieve our dreams. I'm hoping that what is important that you take from this today is that the subconscious has its own language. It categorizes different things and that absolutely you have what it takes to turn it around, to communicate, to love on that inner child and she will love you back and she will bring to you what you want if you understand to be able to speak to her the way you want to speak to her you know the subconscious is absolutely powerful your inner three-year-old has the ability to bring you the life you desire and it's important to work with the unconscious work with her rather than browbeat her into submission or ignore her and when you love on your inner child, when you can respect her needs, you will find that this hooligan child loves you to your absolute core. And she will call in the resources and the opportunities for you. Things you could never even imagine will show up in your life. You do have what it takes and you can do, you can have, and you can be anything that you desire. Absolutely. I'm Coach Christine Clark. Until next time, keep hammering. You've got this. We'll check back next month on the fourth Tuesday and see you then. Thanks for tuning in to Forging a Life with Christine Clark. Remember to acknowledge your talents and skills. Your gifts are the elements needed to claim the life of your dreams. Believe you have what it takes to forge the life you want. Through intuition, trusting yourself, and the process, take action and call your life into a vibrant, beautifully lit existence aligned with your core self. To learn more or work with Christine, visit sunglowtransformation.com.